It's 7 o'clock, let's make a start. If we're going to ask you all to mute, unless you got a, a question or speaker or you know the routine. Thank you very much. Right, welcome all. This was uh, me, BBC Guys World Live, uh, four years ago. That'll be uh, Friday, June the 17th this year, hopefully. Well, it will be uh, talking there. Looking forward to that one. Right, last week's winner, Mark. He's a good lad. He's going to have off and all and the meal. And I always put this on uh, Facebook today. This is when I come out of the mob when I was 27. Met the missus. Gordon Bennett. I love that coat. Oh, it cost me seven quid. Which bloody wages in? Right, lavateria. This is in the greenhouse. Three different alternative composts. If you already remember when I had these, I had these plants come through for me raised bed, and I tried them all with three different uh, composts. But we'll see how they go. We'll follow on their progress with them. There's that one at the back there, when you water it, when it when they are dry, you can water that one, it goes straight through on the bottom already. These two are like normal compost, if they do, as you can see there, once they've dried out, it takes a while for it to soak in. But that one at the back, which I should have put them in a line, you know, with the names up, it goes straight through. So that one's better than these, meaning, if that was in a hanging basket and you watered, all for this would come over the top. So that brew mixture would be good for hanging masking. But we'll keep an eye on them. Tesco again during the week. I had to go in for some bits and pieces before we get from middle. So uh, another dollop, a good dollop spent coffee grounds. Now the last time I went in here, that I got turned away. I said the gaffers have told us not to, because uh, it health and safety. But I thought, I'm going to try while I'm here. And luckily the wench who get it me. I hadn't been told not to dish it out. You getting any but, nice but skirts? <laughs> What's that, mate? Did <laughs> any of them skirts fit you? <laughs> Get out of it. <laughs> right, me uh, flamingo willow in the raised bed. These chaps are just starting to open up, as we can see here. And there's a little uh, shoot on. Right. So far, these are peat-free multi-purpose compost. There's very few that give the, the ingredients on the bags. I've been through them all. But there's one here, which is a blend of, of fine composted coir, which is cocoa fiber. Quite a few using that. Fine bark chippings for aeration. And a sterile mix organic green waste. Hmm. Now I had two of these bags earlier on. Just try them out. And uh, the brew ain't too bad. And they even give you the NPK fertile, uh, ratio of fertilizer, which most bags don't. And also plus two magnesium. Uh, we'll follow on from them again. Right, I did um, a piece probably a couple of years ago now on my normal Facebook, which used to be on uh, YouTube. Not a Zoom. This is the old, and it, it was about different companies, different names, like Father Gills, and they're exactly the same as Marshalls, but different names. Different names, but the same company. And I found this one as well. You Garden is exactly the same as Gardening Direct. Same book, same pages all the way through. Obviously, different uh, web pages and different phone numbers. But uh, same company. So, and I'm still doing it. Right, Cumberland Brandy, I've got me a spare Demijohn. Uh, so, I'm, I'm going to do a, This is a, a good one. It's a good, easy one. And it's an excellent wine. Ingredients, raisins, which are going to give it a kick. And the Demerara sugar, which I use at all. That's going to give it a kick. And the last one that gives it a kick is the wheat. White of an egg and your yeast. Get your bucket, bung all your ingredients in. These are going to be shredded, obviously. Crushed, whatever. So I just use a blender. 
They'll put too many in or they cogs it up, which I'll bloody learn from that. Watch of an egg, lightly beaten, and then your cold waiter. Stir well because I've got to uh, dissolve that, uh, that sugar and mix it well and bung your yeast in and bung it somewhere a bit warm, which is ideal for us. That's uh, not air and cupboard, but the, the boilers in here. Right, this is the tunnel back of the garden. This, they get in here every year, frogs. Two little chaps, they live down here, bottom of the bracken. God knows how they get in. We ain't had rain for a couple of days. And uh, it ain't gonna rain tomorrow, so I'm gonna wait to this lot. Just to give him a drink. Put a... There's a, there's a close up of the chaps. And Rosie's met them for the first time. God knows how they get in. And why they stay here, I don't know. Right, we spend coffee grounds, that's what they come in, them little bags. Check the same as tea bags. I'll just open them up and spread it out. But I've got to dry this out. So we've had some decent days, so all I'm going to do is bung these out and rub these out, lumps out by hand, one with two hands. So it is a, a powder. So I've emptied all the bags. And every day I'll just turn through this. So it dries, what's underneath it as well. As we can see there, no lumps. Right, this is me um, my tr indoor trailing ivy. Obviously, he's hanging up well there. Moved him to the greenhouse so nobody catches him. And we'll come on to that little chap later on. We've got a question for anybody who's got indoor trailers. Right, Dave sent me some photos. But uh, he's feeling uh, crap since he got COVID. So I'm going to talk way right through these. He's going to have a go at Auriculus. And that's his little cabinet in his back garden, his bed for him. So the missus can uh, appreciate him as well. And these are the, the little chaps. Some lovely uh, colours, flowers on them. I've never heard of him before. Never, never seen him before. I don't know if anybody does grow them, but I've put it on Facebook, and there's quite a few people that put them on displays in the garden, like um, Dave has done. But he will keep us up to date with them. Boston flowers. Right, my wine that I've got going, my new one, my common brandy. This has got to be stirred daily for 14 days. And that's after the next morning. So you can see it's started to thicken up and brew already. And the more you mix it, well, that's why you mix it daily. Everything is also kicking in. Right, this, these are my onions from seed. Obviously, when I prick out, I start off in my plastic drinking cup. Then go into a 15 tray insert or size seed tray. And they come out and go into these. These are from uh, Wilco. And that's the final pot. One obviously from there, yeah, one I'm going into now. Yeah. So I made my indentation there with, with a spare, so I know he will go in there snugly. Clover multipurpose compost, which with the vermiculite. You don't see another tomato seed in there, look. Nothing kills off tomato seed. Right, these first six are my compost, meaning I've still got lumps in the compost, as you can see. And I've got nice, white, thick roots. Perfect. Right, I pulled them in, but I need to extend the cane. So I've got a nice, thicker, straighter cane. So he's gone in. I'm now going to transfer them clips off the old cane onto these here. Keep him nice and upright. As we've done it there. Right, this is another one I got out. A, a bit blurred. Well, uh, you can make out it's, it's good uh, root structure, which is what I want. 
don't forget when I've, when I've started using my own compost as a growing medium, I take all the, the worms out, but there's, there's still worm eggs in there. So these are the chaps that have hatched out since I've potted on. So I'll take them out as well. And there's the last one of mine. Ideal time to pot on, just as a root start being around the bottom. And there I've still got the, the small wire on, now he needs straightening up a bit. So I'm going to move that wire over. And now I've got a nice straight onion. Just to help him out, the straighter you'll keep him, the better shape the onion's going to end up with. Right now, the last six, which is uh, the clover with a bit of vermiculite in. Still got some white uh, roots there, but not as white as mine, and honestly. Uh, luckily, my workbench, or one of my workbenches, that's why all my raised beds are back in the garden. I can work from, or if I'm empty, I can use them as uh, workbenches. So a nice sunny day, put them on there, give them a good soaking, and then uh, I've got the drainage you want to Right, the tulips top of the garden, I've never had uh, leaves on them this wide before. I'm waiting for one to open. And looking at them tonight, that should be open tomorrow, because I, I can't remember seeing them like that before. Whether it's the weather or what, I don't know. Right, it's been coffee grounds, a couple of days in the sun, and the lot has dried completely, meaning it's going to stay bagged up for quite a while. It only goes a bit mouldy or off if, if you store it wet. So this lot is getting bagged up. And then I'm going to bag them out. My bag's really the dish out when I do my talks. So these will last me for the next seven talks. Put my stickers on. Spend coffee grounds, good compost activator, slugs and snails hate it. Plus, it's a good soil top dressing. Use it. And I've got them there ready. When I take, I fill the bucket up full of goodies when I do the talks. Right, getting warmer weather, so the overcoat. Or the winter carpet on the um, compost bin is coming off. So the black bit comes off first. That absorbs the heat. Don't forget. Then I'm going to take my carpet off. It keeps the heat in. That's better. And just and say, jump in there, Mick. Sorry. The forecast. We've got snow forecast possibly Wednesday or Thursday in minus two. In the Midlands. Yeah. Yeah. We pay our rates here. <laughs> I'll put that black and round him again. I missed that. Raw, raw male again. Love them. Our sincere apologies. Basically, they've been throwing me crap about. And that's how they ended up. I'm still going to put them out anyway. These are my trailings for the news. So, uh, Plastic drinking cups again, I'm going to go in there, normal multi-purpose compost mixed with vermiculite. Hold them by the leaves, that means I can get them in, and then pack these in. Earth them up either side. Just firm them down slightly in the top. All done. Perfect. Well, nearly. Then give them a good wear tap. Not cold water, greenhouse temperature. Down the plot we had a, a delivery of well rotted chicken muck. So I got me a, a bag full. And this I shall keep up the, um, the shed top of the garden. When they dry out, I shall rub just rub out the lumps so it's in powder form. So and then we'll be even less strength in it. Same as chicken and pigeon muck is a bit of a it's a bit strong, so that'll do me. Right, runners which I planted, three on them. As you can see, there's three coming up there in one plastic drinking cup. They must already coming through. 
Right, this is what we have on our trading sheds. We flog the normal stuff here, which is by the kilo, fertilizers, canes and whatever. But the price of everything is bloody shooting up, especially fertilizers and the canes, because the canes are coming from China. It's bloody transport again. But also we used to sell full bags of uh, some of the people that people ask for grow more as one. Bone meal, spook fertilizer, BTD, we can't get that anymore. But uh, I'm taking this down altogether because once they see the price, I think Christ, I ain't paying that much. So I think the sulfate of potash that's got up to 46 quid a bag. It's bloody frightening. And me, me next order I've got coming, which should be this week, that's when we've got to start putting the proper prices up, the new prices. But we're all in the same boat. This is a photo I found out when I did the... Um, uh, National Village show with London Titmarsh. That was one of the Midland, Cal Cabby, with the heaviest league. And went into the National. I don't even know I got that photo. Mm -hmm. This is a hound lying in the sun next to a pig crackling. He's a good lad. Mm -hmm. And that's how Rosie when we had her. I forgot early. I got this photo on the phone. The difference, I can't remember then. These bloody moons away. We're all gonna pop these on. So uh, three more plastic drinking cups. Take them all out. Separate them. I do just pull them apart. I do, I do take my time and separate them. The less damage to the roof, the better. Right, I'm using uh, my mix and uh, multi-purpose compost. Obviously take the worms out again, mix all that lot up. Put some in the bottom, then hold it by the stem. The stems are nice and strong. Hold him upright and then pack him in. Upright, then give him a good weight. As we see, that's got a, a slight um, liquid manure in it. This is a little pick-me-up. Also doing the um, Keith's plants out of him. He's an uh, everlasting kale. These have got uh, nice roots on them. Started filling the pots, so I'm going to pop them up as well. Right, that's about halfway through the week. Uh, this is um, obviously after another day. It's, it's even brewing even more now after 24 hours, or since the last stir. Uh, Right, Jeffrey, our first speaker tonight. Are you ready, Jeffrey? I'm ready, mate. All yours, sir. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is just a, an aerial shot you can get on Google of where, where uh, the location is of all the allotments in my region. <clears throat> this is a sports park. You can like the right uh, rectangle. You see Mr. V Arena is a basketball arena uh, where they've had championships and everything. Then there's a row, a grey row, like straight ahead from the arena. And then a circle, that's a velodrome, outdoor velodrome. And then you can see another grey line, which are all the allotments. So we've got two rows of allotments, 327 in total. Of. And every like little square you see, is about 10 to 12 allotments if you go closer it's not a good view but you can get a bit closer but it goes all blurry mm -hmm. next one please make see and they're all football fields or football pitches so uh, they've got 21 of them and uh what's it called a baseball field and there's also, uh, what's it called, American football field, which is kind of the old thing you see right now on the top. Yeah, but... So that's about as close as you can get. So you can see each square there is about a uh, hundred, yeah, is about a hundred uh, meters square. 
I got to want a lot of Yep. That's how I divided my plot. Uh, the green lines are supposed to be uh, like gravel or wood chip in my case. And the other thing is the beds. So I've got 12 beds there. Then underneath I've got six beds, which are the new ones this year. Then I've got the polytunnel. And then you can see like plants and that's my comfrey bed. And the round things are all uh, water beds. The big two, one on the right and one on the left is 1,200 liters, like in a cage. And the other ones, the blue ones, are all uh, 220 barrels of uh, 220 liters. Then I've got on the left hand side two compost bins close together. And that's for turning the compost. And when it's finished, it goes up to the top one in the corner. And then from there it gets used. Yes, Nick. Oh, good. These are the beds that you can see the 12 in a row. That's taken last week, so I put everything out. I did expect the snow again, mm -hmm. so I'm going to have to cover a few of them. The first bed you can see is a uh, well in front. There are pots of uh, daffodils, tulips, uh, hyacinth, and uh, Dutch iris. The iris are put in there because they last longer and they flower uh, at the later time. So you've got still something in the pots after the daffodils and all the other things have gone dead. Right, Mick. This is a blanching uh, pot that <laughs> I just made just a long bucket on top of a short bucket. And inside are, next one, Mick, chicory. So I don't know if you know what it is in England. I've not seen it there before. It's kind of a root that grows. You pull it out, you cut off about, you cut off the leaves, the green, about, uh, you leave an inch on them, on the roots, and then you put them in a pot, as close as you can together, and you just put soil around them, but you have to make liquid soil. So mix it with lots of water, let it drain through, so it kind of goes in between the roots, then you leave them, and you force them, and these are chicory. Traditionally here they eaten just baked, like fried in a pan, but they're bitter taste. And if they're like this, yellow, they're not so bitter. If you leave them to get green, they're very bitter. But we use them a lot here and I like it. And in years gone by, like I'm not going to say in wartime, but before the war, uh, the roots were eaten as well and were called chicory. And you if if you roast, uh, roasted the roots and made them into powder, then it was something you added to coffee to make it taste a bit more bitter. Yes, Nigel. I'm going to say, you can, you, <coughs> I, when I was growing up, you used to be able to get a, a product called camp coffee. It was like a liquid coffee in a bottle, and that was that was made from chicory extract as well. No, ah. no, yeah. I didn't know, but. Mm. Here we kind of had... Remember it well, Nigel. Remember that, yeah. Uh, I like to eat the roosts as well. So if you use them like you use um, scor uh, scorsinelia, salsify, if you use them like them, just peel them, boil them, put them in some white sauce, they're very good as well. But it's a taste you have to acquire. If, if you're not used to it, then it's not good, but I like it. So... Mm. Well, kind of a multi-purpose thing. Nice. Epic. Yeah, so everything you see in a pot, like uh, the one, the two on the left hand side, the onion and one of a giant cabbage in green pots. Everything you see in a green pot this year <coughs> is in my own compost for the trial. So you see the difference is not as good result on the giant cabbage as they are in the other pots the onion more or less the same as the other pot so there's not really much difference except but you'll see later what i mean in weeds 
that's the big, big difference. Yes, me. These were uh, early cauliflowers, snowballs, that I sowed in December. I pricked them out there in uh, 1st of February. And they're in new cells I got. I asked Nigel about these uh, muddy boots. And the new cells I got, long lasting. Uh, but they're very deep. They're about uh, 15 centimeters, so about 7 inch, I think. Should be. But you'll see the difference. I've put a lighter uh, next to them so you can see the height next to the picture, please. Thank you. <coughs> and these are them now. They've gone, actually, they've gone out this week. Like I said, because I didn't expect the snow. So I put seven of them out, gave seven to a friend because we grow, I grow all the cabbages and all the tomatoes and then we share them and he grows all the uh, like beans and uh, pumpkins squashes he grows everything from seed and then shares with me so it's kind of safe space and i can grow better cabbages i don't know why but even when i saw them in his greenhouse the same way they don't do as well so i think it's the greenhouse just the light effect uh -huh. Yes, that's them out, seven of them, under fleece, so I'll see what it does, uh, I'll probably cover it over for a day or two with plastic again. That was the first bed, uh, just next to the pots, I show you, you can see the pots on the right hand side. So in there are, uh, there were two kinds of garlic planted in November. On the right, elephant garlic, and on the left, there were three rows of ordinary garlic, uh, solid white. Well, the garlic, the elephant garlic came up, no problem, and none but none of the other garlics came up, not one of them. So I don't know what happened. So I said, okay, I'll do it different. So what you can see there are the clumps, they're uh, leeks, summer leeks, yeah. summer and autumn leeks. So I always sow them inside. When they get to that stage, you kind of see in the pot that they don't grow as quickly anymore. So then I bung them out and let them establish there before I plant them out in the original time about mm, 1st of May. Then they get planted out individually in the place where I want them. There are four kinds there and they're trial to see which one is best suited to our climate. Yeah, mate. That's shallots. The, this week they finally started shooting a little bit of green, four or five of them. So they're doing good. Yeah, Mick. These are onions I sowed inside in clumps again, like uh, I did last year. I planted them out two weeks ago. They're uh, Bedfordshire champions because I like them for storing. I think I think they store the best. But I've you know you say about supporting leeks, uh, supporting onions to keep them upright. Should I try a few here in the clumps, like support them and see if they make bigger onions than the other ones, or you think it's not useful? Try. No, if it's only for eating, just just let them go. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. This is uh, spinach, because. I like spinach, but I like to grow it early so I can use the bed for something else. So I've got about four beds full of spinach now. And this is one under, uh, this one is under the plastic. So you can see all the weeds growing there as well. And a huge foxglove in front has been there for about three years. I always cut it back and it keeps coming back, but that, that one, I don't know why. Uh, and but lots of weeds, so I have to take out the weeds this week. Yeah, Mick. That's another the bed next to it. Again, spinach, but instead of under plastic, under Enviromesh. And it seems to be growing just as well, I think. Which I find strange. I thought it would be better under plastic, but it seems to be the same. Yeah, Mick. Next one. That's an empty bed on the right. And they're going to be going in the summer cabbages. Uh, cauliflowers, I mean. 
and the bed next to it with the boards on it. The bed is dug out uh, 32 centimeters, that's one foot from soil level. It's dug out and filled with sand mixed with soil, sift soil. It's been there for two years now. And in there I grow parsnips, uh, salsify and parsley root because they need a deep root run and the plank on top is again an extension so you have 30 centimeters one foot underground then ground level a plank that's about another well, six seven eight inches on top so they can grow really deep yeah next one that's uh under there are carrots they've just started coming out this week uh, Nantan carrots. I had a job finding seeds for them, uh, so I can have my early summer carrots. Yeah, next one. That's another bed of spinach. You see on the plastic again and doing okay. Not amazing, but they should be. It should be half halfway May May time. I can harvest them in big big leaves, and I like spacing them outside because I prefer. The big leaves of spinach, the darker ones that are more, I can't say more tasty, but they, it's more kind of a spinach taste than the baby leaf. I yeah. don't really like the baby leaf that much. So I space them out so they can grow really big leaves. Yeah, big. That's where my uh, cobra beans are going. And then the bed next to it is a bed I think is going to be for uh, third cauliflower bed so I'm going to go five types of cauliflower different names and for five different harvests I'm going to try every two months or three months to harvest cauliflower because I don't want the blood to put in the freezer yeah, thank you. these are pots bottomless uh, buckets and I'll use them for if the cormlets get through from a uh, Ukraine. I'm going to put them in there. I'm going to put uh, three rows just of uh, three cormlets each. So I know where they are, what number they are. And the cormlets are also going into the other beds, but I'll we'll probably see them later. And also in a friend's garden, I've nicked a piece of ground of him for helping me. Yeah, make... These are tomato seedlings. The three kinds. The one on the left is called ananas. It's called a pineapple. So it's like a beef steak, but very, very sweet taste. I re really, really like them. But it, it's a difficult one to grow because it's very susceptible to uh, not not botrytis. Like it kind of goes moldy the stem. It doesn't go black, it kind of goes moldy. I don't know why, but that one and banana legs do the same thing. A tomato called banana legs, excellent tomato for eating. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, long shape, like little bananas, but the same thing happens. It go, the stem goes moldy. Not brown, not potato, anything, or just goes moldy. I don't know why, but I'll have a go again. I try every year, but not, not with a lot of success on that one. The next one in the middle is a new strain here that is resistant to, it says, all types of fungus for tomatoes. So we'll see. And the third one is just the little baby tomatoes, the cherry toms, the long ones, the orange ones that I like. And that, that just go to the shop, buy one, squeeze out the seeds and pop it on there and that's it. Yeah, make so you can see that everything that I showed before, but on the right hand side are two uh, giant beetroots. So we'll see if they go big or not. They should do. I got the seeds uh, last year from one of you, and I'm seeing to go how big they go. Yeah, make these are I wrote them especially. I don't know if you can see number four on that. No, it's number 
six, five, yeah, the, num the number four is below zero leaks. They, it says on there that they are rust resistant, so that's something we really, really need in the gardens. Mm -hmm. So I've done a few pots of that and I'll break them out and in a row between the others and see if rust gets the others and that one doesn't. Then number five is Parabola, another leak, also winter leak. So we'll see if we can get uh, good ones of that. Then number six is a winter leak called uh, Giants, Winter Giants. Number seven are early sprouts, uh, Churchill. I think that's on, yeah, there. That's then number eight. See, it hasn't come up yet. They're late sprouts called Thor. So the Churchill ones should be, according to the packet, uh, the same as the ones I normally grow as Nautic and they should be ready from September to December. And then the late ones, the Thor, I should be picking from December onwards to March. So, scattering again. Hopefully, ho hopefully the harvest is scattered. Then the number nine is cauliflower called Alpha, which is the next cauliflower on to be planted out. And then number 10s are melons, uh, leopard, they're called this white and green ones because I'm allergic to the cavallon, so to the orange melons. Yeah, uh, two things there. The raspberries I got from a friend and just bung them in and I'll see what they do because last year the there, but I think it's because of the hedge. Mm. It gets too dry. On the right hand side is a hedge, a really big one, thick one. And I think it just saps all the water from there. So I'll have a try again and see what it does. And on the left is a sloping plank and in those pipes last year I grew a long parsnip and long carrot but they didn't work so I started uh, I just left them in uh, just outside for the winter and they kind of bent so I'm going to wait them now and see what happens but I've started cutting them lengthwise so I can open it up easier but the drill kind of went poing. so I have to get a new piece of drill for that to go on with them. Yeah, mate. These are the carrot and parsnip tubes that I've done. I cut them all down the center like uh, you told me to so I can get them out easily here. because this year I had a hell of a job getting my fingers around them in the tubs to get them out. They were very thick, but not at all any use for long. They were long, but like with seven, eight roots on them. So well, the only thing I could use was just like the top two inches of them, like a little ball. But they still tasted good. Yeah, Vic. And this is inside the polytunnel. That's carrots again, but because I couldn't get the long strain seeds, I use the strain called uh, Saint Valerie, which should produce some long ones. Hopefully, it says on the packet, so you can see them coming out. But this one, instead of in pipes, I filled the sand, uh, watered it well for three weeks, and then bored out the holes with a piece of pipe I had. Mm -hmm. So I tried it that way. That way, I've had success before. The other way, I haven't. So we'll see. Yes, one basic. I've used them uh, years ago, Jeffrey from Valerie. I remember the name. They, 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 they are a long exhibition leak, yeah. Yeah, no. I just got it from a, a, a store here, Aviva, where we get all the seeds. Yeah. And said long carrots, so I said, mm, I'll have a go. I'll see what they do. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, this should be good. <laughs> this is what I need to put in every pot of gladiola or dahlia that I plant outside and that's a mix seed pot I call it they're 90 pots they're filled with something called snow carpet which are like little little flowers white ones that kind of spread and if you put them like on in a bucket like I will they kind of droop over there and you see kind of a white ball of all white flowers and in there is also uh, every time two um, tag it, I think you call it. 
we call them stinkies. They attack it like you put next to tomatoes. So well, I put them. Like marigolds. Tag your cheese. Like a marigold. Yeah. Tag your cheese. Yeah, tag your cheese. Uh, I use them like in every pot I put them to have a bit of extra color mm -hmm. like before the dahlias grow in there they normally start before the dahlias the flower so you've got otherwise you've just got green in the pot with no color so I put them in as well yes mate these are the sarpomira potatoes I put in yesterday uh, what I've got left over is for a friend and I put these back together I make my holes put in my sweet uh, my uh, potatoes then I cover it up heap it up make the trenches like it should be done at the height I want and then I scatter over the red poppies that you see just to give a bit of color and then at the bottom of the one on the picture before me sorry yeah no, that's no problem you can see sweet pea seeds and uh, corn seeds, maize. So I plant two maize, five sweet peas and one sunflower together in a pot. I sow them about the well, beginning of May and then I, when they're big enough I transfer them outside mm -hmm. and then the maize and the sunflower kind of act as a support and the sweet peas grow around them so we get like three in one yeah Mick. these are the pots like uh muddy boots uses uses uh, four of them but i've got buckets with holes in as well so i thought that's where the good potatoes are going to go so i thought right at the back of that instead of a supporting wall i'll make this and put two potatoes in each pot cover them and see what happens so you can lift them put them into the polytunnel and store them like this over the year I think yep next for me that's it you're free you're a star no problem anybody got any questions for Jeffrey that's good Jeffrey you've <laughs> covered everything you've done everything <laughs> cheers for that Jeffrey mate no problem Good bit of trialing, like it. Well done, Jeff. Right, let's get on here. Uh, do I want that one? Or that one? That one in it. Yeah. Right, wheel up, let's get going. Jeffrey, Nigel, Dennis. Is it a den? Yeah. Oh, Dennis. Yes, we have trolling some of den. Good man, good man. These are the park for the dog shit. Good day, Putin. Love it. They fill up quick. Yeah, right, is he? I think he's learning his lesson slowly. Is that what I've won, Mick? Sorry? Is that what I've won? A full ten. <laughs> <laughs> It'll cost me a bobbing bloody postage. <laughs> Your bloody eye. <laughs> right, I've got a bit a uh, bit more um not much green waste, but I'm gonna chop it up ready for me wormery. Bug it in there. Wet cardboard comes off first. Then there's all my little chaps in there. Right, this is what I'm after the worms. So I'm gonna take a few out ready for me compost bin as you can see I've done there the only thing that is not breaking down obviously it will break down eventually but these were the husks of the corms which Colin you just took off your corms tonight yeah yeah well uh, they don't break down quick in the compost which is a uh, so I've taken them out and the other good thing about this with the worms loads of eggs in there so I've got babies later on so just because I'm taking a good dollop of worms out, it's not going to say I'm going to take the lot out. Still a load in here, so them lot are going in the, in the compost heap, help them out. Because I made a cock, cock up doing this tray, I didn't put cardboard on the bottom. 
I just lined it with the paper. Obviously the, the paper's been well gone, that bloody at it. And the worms are dropping through. So I've picked them up obviously, take them out. So I'm gonna do a new tray to go underneath and line that one with a cardboard. Which is what I've done there. Now by the time that is uh, broken down and ready, they haven't gone through the cardboard, which is what I should have done in the first place. So I'm emptying that one, the original one, into this. As you can see, I've gone through the paper, what was originally on the bottom. So I'm still learning myself as well. And uh, all for the worms which I've kept, they go back into that one. Uh, it didn't, it was nice and moist, so it didn't need any way to run. And then maybe carpet lid, um, cardboard lid on the top of that. But this was lava. Uh, this was drying out, so that have another bit of water on as well. And then the worms are just sprinkled on me, me bin outside. Uh, crushed egg shells, give them a feed as well. Should have put that on earlier on, and on my compost heap as well. They love it. Don't forget, worms have got gizzards like chickens, so they're about to chew it. Carpet on top. Right, these are my um, Nick's onions, my Trevians. I'm just measuring the pots to get some decent pots for them to go into. And uh, these two are nice and solid. Nice big holes on the bottom, so obviously I'm going to cover that up. Just turned out there's a bit of a chiclet off base three. That'll do. Look after the roots. Right, there's a chicken muck in the bottom. Then there's osmuk on top of that one. And then me alpaca muck. That is going on the top of them too as well. Making sure I'm not getting too high, which I'm not there. I've just got to bring him up a bit more, as you can see. And the mixture was going around the outside is uh, spent mushroom compost and worm casts, which are them two there. Then I've got me... Uh, this is the alternative compost. There's clover, little... Plus that, there's uh, that one from middle, with the um, basket, basket gump. But a bit of brew that's going in as well. Then there's a bag of topsoil, which I put me in queue. And this one is the rubbed out dried goat muck. So I've got my lumps out there. I'm just rubbing them out by finger and thumb. So I've got smaller pieces basically. Then there's the, the other one, the last one. Uh, one of the rubbish, I think Westland compost, where it's got all the rubbish in, where it's got a texture on. And my last one was the last of Rony's by Ocho. I'll enjoy that as well. So there's one of the leaks upending. Just a good time to plant him out. It comes out of water two days before. It shouldn't collapse anyway because there's nice to dollop of roots on it. And I've got the right height now of that to the top. Put a bit more brew underneath him to lift him up. Put him square in. Hey, what, Mick? That onion will explode with all that in the bottom. Got to look after the chaps. So again, nice and queer, and the mix which I've got just brewed together there, I've packed that round the outside of them too. No, nice and firm, no gaps, no air holes. Nothing. What I'm are you planning to do after the final pot, Mick? Are you putting it in, in a in, in a raised bed or? Uh, because of the holes he's got underneath, decent sized holes, where I mean, the roots are going to come through there anyway. But he'll go in the the bed on the greenhouse. I take it out of the pot. I tell you what, that with all that stuff you've got in the bottom of that pot, it, the nitrogen in that, oh. it will just go. It will go mad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, by, by the time he goes out anyway, the root should have um, overtook the pot. Meaning, I reckon within within a month, that oh. will that will fill that pot with roots, mm. and then I'd whip it out and get it in a in a bed somewhere. Yeah, good thinking, Batman. So he's gone in, so this lot is packed down 
on the sides obviously not, not disturbing that much because I want that hurt and then I've got these which I used to use for me um, large onions when I, when I do plant them out I thought them would be ideal for keeping those because the, the canes with the, the green clips they, they are no good for the onion this side so I'm just holding the, the leaves up there and I've placed in round one of each structures and then I can take them canes and the clips off so we start from him I just bung him on top of there so then I'll take them canes out of the clips I'll put all these if I'm too low obviously I'll put them down the bottom but it's, it's just helping him helping him out he ain't struggling putting nourishment to keep up right then we'll put the chap out and uh, this weather, they, they come out anyway because these are in the cold and the greenhouse on the floor during the, the night and during the day they just come out and a couple of days these are bone dry so I'll, I'll flood them and all oh Jeffrey, part two have you got your breath back? he's a good lad part two yeah, <laughs> okay uh, yeah, this is uh, me collecting like runoff water, I call it horsey water. So it's when it rains, I leave it for a day or two or three to kind of evaporate a bit so it's not too much water and a bit more concentrated. Then I scoop it up, put it through a sieve, and then put it in bottles and then transfer it to a big tub I have uh, in the garden. Yeah, mate. This is the amount of bottles I take with me and my little sieve and I filled every bottle every bottle there except one I only filled a half so I have to go back again after this week if it rains I'll go back again a day or two after anyway and everybody says about uh, molehills best soil there is well these are the molehills where we live they're pure solid clay Oh, really? That's when they dried out, and the next pick should be the one if they're fresh. So you see, <laughs> they're not a lot of use. It's just pure clay. If you touch it, it's hard. It breaks down in like in dust, but you can't grow anything in it. Anyway. This is what I collect from the farm as well, where I get the horsey water. That's a compost bin that I fill up every year to let it rot so I every time I go to, to the garden I do a walk of about well, about a mile there and back with a wheelbarrow first with the empty one then with the filled one and dump it on there so every time I go I go get one wheelbarrow and fill it up and after uh, let's say next March I'll empty that one after it's been turned a few times it goes from the right one into the left one then back again to the right one and by the time we hit march it's all gone uh, completely like good stuff and then you use it but if you don't save it you get lumps yeah make i'll take it it's nice and flat where you are yeah good man it's like, it's like the the, deals around here. you use the the running track go to the it's kind it's like a ch we call it a children's farm. I think you call it a town town farm or something like that. Like they have rabbits and horses, donkeys, yeah. pigs, everything to educate the children. And they put all the crap in one heap. So we just go and collect. And you can see that's from inside the stables now. And it's got kind of. It's not straw. It's called flax. You know. It's like an alternative to straw they use, but it's also got a lot of sand in there from yeah. the, the stables. So I just pop it up on there and let it go. Perfect. That's the same again as the, the 90 pots. And then the little silt rays next to the blue ones are the dahlias I sowed. The six in pots in one are courgettes. And the little cell trays I got from BMQ, you see, they're starting to decompose already, to break them, but they're about five years old. There's a beetroot. 
so as you like all the spinach I grow as well are in those little cells and then as soon as the cells are round enough so if you can pick them up and they don't fall apart I plant them outside that's why I like the little trays yeah, make... those are the beds in the friend's garden I made to also plant the combs comlets I'm going to put sticks on there to make a grid so I know uh, there's 14 that can go each side so let's say 30 60 90 90 can go in there 90 times 3 comments yeah, this is what we use corned beef like here either between sandwiches or we make this is fried onions uh, then you add potatoes uh, stock and then when the potatoes are half soft boiled, add your corned beef, and then... Yeah, make... Eat it like this. So, something new to try, make. <laughs> That's yeah. a bit cruel, that, Jeffrey. I like that. <laughs> Go, make. Now, this is a start of something very unexpected I'm going to try. Uh, about... Well, three weeks ago with the big storm we had or two weeks ago with the big storm we had a lot of trees got uh, damaged and pulled down and now they've all started to chop them up for wood chip but there was one pile there that was pure uh, ferns so I said okay if you compost this will you get ericaceous compost that you can use yes or no so I said I'll have a go so I put wire mesh then they called fish baskets from the fish uh, from the fishing vessels. I cut out the bottom, put that on top of the mesh, a little bit of horse muck to get everything started, and then go make. You see, we get all of this. We've got tons of it now. It smells lovely. Your garden's like pine fresh when you use this. And then I bunked them all in, stomped them down, watered them well, and said I'll leave them and see if I get get irrigation compost from this or not in a year or two years. I don't know how, how quickly these break down. But I'd like your opinions on will it break down or not? Will it be irrigation enough to grow, let's say, a blueberry in? But I'm going to buy two blueberries next year and put one in there in the compost from that and then one in an irrigation compost I'm going to buy and I'm going to also test them for the pH levels so I can tell you about it yeah Mick good man trialing like it so you see there's three bottomless yeah boxes on top of each other stamped down hard so it can compost good it's been watered and I'll leave it there so I'll leave it there for I don't know how long it takes to break down we'll see yeah, Mick. and that's the same stuff and I said could you make a liquid feed out of that that's irrigation uh, for your blueberries or something so that's one bucket filled and then I topped it up with water put another bucket on top of there so it's kind of in the shade and I'll see if I can get irrigation water from it or something I'll also test the pH level and see if we can use it yeah, Mick. This is this different bags of soil of a potting mix. You can see there it says universal potting mix. And that one is from Aldi we get here. And it's 32% peat. So it's less peat than the others. But it's not that bad. Yeah, Mick. So you see, it says uh, dry stuff matter is 20%. Then you've got calcium and magnesium in there. Uh, turf, stroisel, which means loam, 
uh, null hold, which means uh, like if you read from the top of the line, like tuin turf means uh, garden soil. Compost van null hold means from uh, irrigations like uh, pine forest. Compost from that. Then loof boom shores means um, uh, what's it called? That's easy for you to say, Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, not easy to remember. Um, allez, boom shores. Like from the wood chip, they make a compost, and it's used as an additive in that soil mix. Then turf strooisel means uh, peat. Messed up of bases from calcium and magnesium. That's it. So that's what's in there. Yeah, and it lasts six to eight weeks. Yeah, six to eight weeks. Darna uh, which means after the six to eight weeks, you have to start adding feed, liquid feed, or any other kind of feed. And this is when you sieve it, this stays from the whole bag, you get left with this. So you kind of see everything in there. It's like yeah, bit of bits of bark, bits of stone. The round bits are like it's like balls of clay. If you if you push on them, they still stay they change form but they stay solid. Same as us then. Yeah, this one is 100% turf. So, which one? 100% peat. It's the cheapest one we can get. And I like this one the best, I'm sorry to say. I've been using it for years. It's two pounds a bag. It's from uh, Everyday, which is like a white commercial product here that's used by one uh, company that has multi-story chains all over Belgium. It's called Colorade. And they started the original white product, we call them here. So that's it. That, that's that's beautiful stuff. That, to work with, it's nice, dry, no lumps. Yeah, mate, if you can. I think there's a sift button. But this you get out of it. That's what's left after you sieve a bag. Mm. That's it, sift. Yep, next to Mick. This is a balcony and terrace plant. Like you have basket mix in there. Uh, it's, I think it's 40% as well. Next one, Mick. Uh, okay, let's go. Um, droge stof, 20%, which means that crappy compost from the council. Yeah. Then uh, organic matter, 10%. pH water zone, 4, 5 to 7. But I don't know why they put pH and then water. Is it what they put, what kind of water they put on there to emulsify it or something? I don't know. Like even it says electric charge. So why the hell they put electric charge? I, I don't know. Don't know. Because I asked and they said we call it halading, which means uh, like you can the electric charge can go through it at this amount per second. So why you need to know that I don't know. <laughs> then it says uh, Mastofen uh, NPK. 14, 16, and I think it's 17, the other one. So I think that's nitrogen, potash, and what the K stands for, I don't know. Phosphate. Phosphate? I don't know. 35 liter. Yeah. And that one is four pounds something a bag. Yeah, we... Potash, okay, yeah. Then this is um, a universal potting mix again. But you have to turn it back. Yeah, next picture so I can see what's in there. Ah, no, doesn't work. It's. Um, I, th 
think it's the that's the 90 percent peat free one but if you mix it it's it's really really cla uh, crappy it's it stays like in a lump it's just awful to work with it gets claggy and if you water it the water runs through you have to soak the pot to use it it's mm, I, I don't like that one and it's the ex most expensive one of all it's a uh, eight eight euros and it should be the cheapest one now well, the second cheapest one because it's got the most range of beat in there mm. yeah, next one that's just somebody told me here about daffodils for showing yeah and i wonder if this was what they meant with the petal on top like you get the three yep upright triangles but i didn't know if that was it's just a question general question yeah we used to have daffodil shows when we first started calling a gory club and i, I bunged on in near enough the same as him that's how that judge likes him I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. He said I'll just take, pick up one and ask. Yes, Mick. And these I wanted to cross with the other one, so, but you can't find a stem in there. You can't find any, like, pollen strings or anything if you open that one up. So I don't uh -huh. know how you cross pollinate those. But I wanted, like, to do a test and see if you can get the orange center on that one but there's no, if you peel all the flowers back there's nothing left you get no stigma no no stamen no nothing so i don't know how it can't be a good one for bees i think because it, i don't know where 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 they go yeah, we, that's what i do in front of every bed uh, I got two pots sunk into the ground with daffodils, uh, tulips and the uh, dash iris and then in the middle I put the wallflower and those pots can be lifted out and replaced with pots of uh, daffodils or pots of I don't know, dahlias or, some, or something so I always do this, lift out the pots and then bung those pots at the back of the polytunnel to let them die back and get the bulbs for next year. Yeah, Mick. And this is the last one. I don't know what it is. I think it's moss, but I'm not sure. But I had a bag of compost from a friend. I riddled it, and this kept sticking to the grate. This is the underside. So I think it's moss, but I'm not sure. Or bracken, or I don't know. It didn't say on the back. Mm, could it, be moss it, was, it was supposed to be a peat free one and that's what I got stuck on it was a real nuisance yep next one that's it Dennis has a question yeah well you know the EC on that bag I think it's um Electro, electrical conductivity, I think what happens yeah, is um, uh, I've got a gauge which tests the conductivity in, in the pots with the chrysanthemum so I know when to feed and when not to feed. If, if the reading is 0.2 um, or under, I can feed. If it's over 0.2 on the gauge, I, I leave it for another week. It might I, be that, but I'm not, I'm not saying it definitely is that, but I would think it's something to do with the conductivity. Mm. Yeah, I thought it just meant it lets electricity through at that rate or something. I said, why the hell are they putting it on there? I didn't know it had anything to do with feeding. I, think, I, haven't, I, think... noticed, I haven't noticed that on any other compost. No, me neither. I've no. never seen yeah. it before. Yeah, I, th I think they use it more in hydro. Dennis put it in quite right. You can get, I've got a pen, it's by a company called Blue Labs, and it does give the EC readings and stuff like that. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Is that, that, is, that, is that an indication of when you get a, a build-up of excessive salt in the soil? Yes. It, it affects your... Yeah. Yep. I see. It's a, <clears throat> it's a salt build-up. Because as, you, as, you, as you're watering, you're washing it out anyway, all the time. Um, yeah. More so in pots than, say, in, in, in the bed, in the tunnel or something. 
Um, obviously, if you if you don't wash all the sorts out of the bed during the growing season, what it, w- it will affect next year's crop because it because it, it just it just won't grow as good. You've got to wash it. You've got to get that soil out. That's why they they um, um, they take yeah. the covers off and let the winter rains wash it out. I, I, I think it. it um... It affects the take up of the fertilizer, doesn't yes. it? it? It makes it difficult. If, yeah. if the salt balance is wrong, I don't know. No, you're right, Not Colin. That's dead right, mate. Yeah. You're dead right. Yeah. That's good to know. Thank you. It's usually going under covering it like greenhouse or tunnel. Because the, the, the rains ain't washing the salts out. Yeah. yeah. That's they, they flood the beds end of the season, get rid of the salts. Yeah. I used all the bags that you see there. I riddled them all, mixed them with the half sand, half the mixture of that. And then I filled my carrot pipes with it. So <laughs> see what it does. Uh, if I touch two carrots yeah. and electricity passes, passes through them, it's from that bag. The, the only thing about the index on it, uh, Jeffrey, is it, yeah. it appears to be very high. If you get, if you get number one, then you wouldn't you you'd have to use whatever feed is in there until that comes down below point two. On mm. on if if you had a pit schedule gauge, well, why they say it'd be one to four because four would be massively high. Mm. To cover their backside, I suppose. Yeah, that is it. If it's what were you thinking? Yeah, they may they may mean something else. But um, as I say, I've never seen it before, so I'm just Thank amazing you. that is conductivity. Nick, I bet Nick, okay, does Nick you. know anything? Uh, uh, he'd be the chap to answer that. Yeah, oh, he's man. gone. He's gone, I'm afraid. He, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, he's at the goal. Jeffrey, thank, thank you, you, sir. Here's Jeff. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank Good you, lad. Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. Right, top tunnel, raised bed. Let me tunnel. Uh, I think it was Nick that mentioned uh, last week about what's the moisture content of your beds under cover. Usually, by now, if I had the time, then uh, I've took the cover off and I'm getting a couple of drenches through the, the last couple of months or so. But because I haven't had time, but because I did at the end of the year, last year, when everything comes up, I had my muck, as you can see, chicken muck is still here. Give it a good soaking and then cover it. So I've just took the cover off. This was during the week. I've parted the, the straw there, the, the rabbit mug. Just gone down about five inches. And I've got a fish full and squeezed it. And it's just about sticking together. So that tells me it ain't dry as it is up top. Obviously the, the top, top two inches are, are dry. But there's still a bit of moisture below. So that, that'll do me until I'm ready to plant out. Obviously then it'll get a, a good soaking of a good brew. And I know me other beds, uh, my raised beds top of the ground, have got more moisture than this one has in the tunnel. So I'm happy with that. So I bunged him back on until I need him. Right, um, during the week, it was chilly Paul's missus's uh, birthday Kerry and uh, so I took her uh, as I, as I had some crap recently with bloody cancer and all this as people do obviously but I, I took her two of uh, two canners I off soon then I've got a spare and uh, a bottle of me good wine so uh, that pleased her for a bit there's had some crap Right, strawberries, these in the baskets. If you remember, I, I bung these out last year, end of last year. Like, a, I'm still there, I'm just about making them out, but there's no sign of nothing. So I'll get them a, a good way to it with um, uh, liquid or smoke, just to see if they'll pick up. We'll have a look next week, see if there is any sign of anything. Right, uh, Paul, give us a talk about his chilies. Last week he said he went down Rovers. And I thought, not be meaning to go. 
because my mate Reg Mole works there. So we legged it down, nice sunny day, so we took the hound. We could take a run, but we can take a walk around here. But I only wanted a quick perf. But luckily the pots was outside, which is what we want to see in room. But Reg Mole is a good bad. A couple of shows that I've talked at, he's been my compare. Plus we've had him a talk of a, a couple of months ago down Garnet Club. But uh, he's one of the good ones. Uh, Anbury, Countryside Show, which is Saturday 2nd of July. This is near Redditch in Wiltershire. They've asked me to judge the veg. And also I've got the Q&A panel with Reg. He bummed him and Amy, so I'm, I'm doing that with him. And next year, then, he, he, he's persuading him to get speakers in the show. He says that uh, that'll interest the troops that walk around. So he's talked me into that. So I'll be speaking there next year. But uh, he's a good man. While I was there, I saw these two. I thought, that will do. For me raised bed, for some of me climbing stuff. Also with the compost I saw out there, and uh, a pair of them. This one is was expensive. Mm, okay. I've just got RHS on it. That should tell you it's expensive. And there's a little rip on the back there, luckily for me. So I had a quick purr. Do you know what it looked like? Bracken. Obviously I couldn't get a, a, a closer look. I got the price of these, 9 99 Because um, I don't need a majority of mine now. Because I don't, don't need them out of the plot. So I might be flogging them 3 quid each, if anybody's interested. I've got about 20 on them. Right, so I got these two back on, and I was going to bung them on the back there, which I have done there. You'll see that one better, but there's one that in, one that in. I mean, them climbers I've got, and blue flowers, they just get them at that height. So they'll be perfect for holding them up. Oh, look at the hound with her Ted. There's a good egg. Right, next door neighbour. He had somebody to wallop his fence and just about make out the colour on the top there. But that's the colour there. Once it's dried, it dries like paint, not like um, a whitewash or how it, how it used to be. A wood fence covering. And this was it, the one he bought. I thought, bloody hell, that's a posher. But it does what it says on the tin. Autumn gold, so obviously we had to have the same with the colour. So I started walloping this end. I took everything down. I was in the sweet piece of lay down here as you see there. So nice and clear, nice day, no wind. So I started walloping. And everything was pulled away from the fence as much as uh, as best as I could do it. And uh, I did this lot, just did it in a day, just that side. And I pulled this lot away as well because the rows of the climbers. And just about make the string out, just put it away. And I managed to do that all the whole of that panel. So I managed to get about that fur, then I had to go behind the bin and then the next. Uh, that's a crap photo, but it looks effective on a night. These lot I took off the eggs I've planted the fence. All that dries in two hours. I still had to put them back and put them back next day when I put everything else back. Well, the lights we got down the side, I put some for the money antenna. I put some on the top of there and all. And I'm going to get some for down the side of there. Right, next morning, nice dry windless, so I'm going to start putting everything back. So this is one out of Keith. I'm going to tie him back on there which I have done there. Sweet peas I've put back up on that little trellis thing. These lot, I can cut them or take away the... what's been pulling away. Quick advert dinner time. No, all this was day time. This is one of the famous meals when I was in the mob in the base down Portsmouth. It was a blank week and I couldn't come up for the weekend. You had to go on the aisle down there. 
that I was in a proper grid. Didn't like them. Spag balls and whatever. I used to love my egg beans and chips and I used to be in the Trafalgar Club and one of the winches was trying to get after me and used to give me a free meal. Egg beans and chips, pint of milk, bread and butter. Mmm, beautiful. When I come over on a weekend, that's what mother did for us as soon as I got home. Favourite meal, still love it. We, we haven't had this for bloody yorks. Uh, ben was doing a bit of gardening down in London. Did a bit of work for this woman. They got a compost bin. He said, "Can I have a look in your bin?" He took the lid off, and that was a photo. It's a bit blurred, but he said, "Is that good?" I said, "It's bloody excellent." Right, black currant, another wine ready, and it's cleared. This was um, probably about ten days ago, two weeks ago. I had to put some findings in to clear him. Well, he's now cleared. So we siphon these off. Nice and clear, yes. Bit left over. In fact, uh, your mister's had that tonight. But this is a uh, drying. One of the driest I've done. I, I couldn't drink it, it didn't give me a good egg. But obviously, some people do like dry wine. Obviously, it's a red end. But, uh, another photo in the garage well these need potting on again obviously uh, the weather we'll be having and if it is in the greenhouse or summer because you're watering every day and things are going to grow so he needs potting on again all these do so the next pot size up is my red pots that's why I think Roots tells me it's a healthy plant so these have been buried about, about an half inch and uh, I want extra roots, exactly the same with every other plant, brassicas, whatever, peppers, plant out, you get roots coming out of the stem. Keith's plants are getting, um, going in again, that one's a bit deeper as you see there, so it'll go straight up to that first leaf, firmed in, as you can see there, firmed in, upright, oh, nice. He was coming off any road, so I took him off, so I know what straight through him. More dahlias need um, taking off so I'll get me razor blade out cut it diagonally now I thought about these two he's got two large leaves on and I found me all man rooted powder it's going to be out today by now we're still doable so I did one I put the leaves off and that one I left them to one so do people you can come in now if you want or at the point of the end do you put well, it in that in half, Mick, the leaves sorry with the, that one you got your back to one cut those yeah. leaves in half just slice them off all together yeah yeah just so you still got the first pair of leaves on just yeah. cut, you know we're, we're the there, oh there. there just there yeah Got you. Like half, halfway across there. Perfect. See, I've learned some of tonight. Oh, I was talking to um, Ian Sutherland the other day, Nick. Uh, Nick. Yeah. And he, he takes, you know, this little tip. Oh. Uh, he actually he actually roots that, cuts it off by there, and roots that. And I've, I've started doing it now, and what he, what he reckons, I've, I've yet to prove it, you get massive roots. On a small plant, uh, when they actually grow, then you've got you've got you've got a massive engine underneath for him to go. Yeah, like um, it. That's, that was, I mean, he's pretty good, Ian. You know, so. Yeah. That's taking the 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 very smallest tip out of the cut, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the I, same. It's the same with um with fuchsias this yes. time of year. Um. If you've taken cuttings previously and then you take the tip out of the cutting, yeah, uh, um, the hormones in them are so great they'll just root in 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 a few days and they'll make sturdy plants. Oh. So it must be the same for for uh, dahlias. Yeah, like it. So next time I'll just leave that bit of leaf on there. Just there, Mick. Yeah. Yeah, busting. 
Don't forget your libel. Yes, dear. <laughs> I've only got one day, Leo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right, this chap in the greenhouse. Now, people who have got these, if we get a, a close-up, now, obviously, that, that's the pot is in. Now, there's the tray underneath. So, I'm giving him a good watering until he starts dripping out of there. But people who've got these hanging in the living rooms or whatever, is there a, a special pot with a tray on, or is that it, as I've got it there? And you just bring it outside to water? I've seen some pots like that, Mick, where the, the saucer clips underneath, like on three pegs or something. Uh, Oh, like similar to that, so the, the, like pegs hanging down or something. The pegs are actually in the pot, and it pushes up into the holes into the into the um, pot. But there's like six holes, and you, three of them are used to to, to actually hold the saucer in. And you uh -huh. can use it like a wicking system then to pull the water up. Yeah. It just holds a bit more water. That does, Mick. Yeah. Right, this is a, a talk I did. When did I do it? Friday. I do it on Sunday. This was a, a technical, obviously. Dad and Rog, great night tonight talking to technical and a uh, district called the Old Society hosting Asta Gardner. Good meet my friend Mick Bolton, the Cobbles King, to regale us with uh, many types of music clicks. Really nice, as you can see, I won a bottle of mix of uh, famous alcohol. Obviously, I, I class this as a, a talk, so I, I took them loads of goodies for the raffle. And because uh, I know them a good crowd, I took a bottle of wine in as well. Of course, he bloody wanted day because he tried in some crap on the way in. But uh, we've, we've had Dan and Rog for um, a talk at our place and all. He's a laughing, known as a laughing gardener. And, uh, I think it's BBC Radio WM. I think, don't quote him, but. Yeah, from he, local radio station. Is it? He, 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 well, I've stopped listening to it now because I've changed all the presenters. But he used to be on BBC WM with uh, Molly. Is it Molly Green? Oh, that was Rebel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very entertaining. Oh, he's a good lad. Very knowledgeable. Yeah. But he's uh, he's got contacts as well, and he's he does. Um, Quite a few shows, and he's putting the feelers out, and getting me talking in, in them as well. So that's uh, more mates you got, more contacts you got. As we all know. Excuse me. Well done, mate. Mm. I've got to get out of this. Escape. Excuse me. Let me escape. Right, anybody got anything to bring up? Yes, Mick. Or yes. You where'd, you get, where'd you get where you get them red red things from? Them cups. You did say earlier. Wilco. Wilco's is it? Yeah. Either either Wilco or the pound shop, whoever flogs them most of oh, I've, I've had some of them. It, they must have come from you originally. I've had some of them for four or five years. I still uh, keep growing in them, are you? Yeah. But they're a nice size, aren't they? Yeah, good size. All right, cheers. I think they hold a pint. Yeah, I would say they do, looking at mm -hmm. them, yeah. Is Roland still here? What was that? Is Roland still here, the biochar one? Roland, have you gone? Of course, here, mate. Yeah. It's just a question, like, we can is get there... charcoal here, but is it, can I use it the same way as biochar? Well, no, there's a Roland Tyler on, but he's not at his computer. Oh, uh, I know one earlier. You know me. Yeah? That, that dish you showed on there with the corned beef. Yeah? I, I do that, and I add baked beans and call it corned beef hash. Yeah. Uh, Chop, it's chopped potatoes, chopped onions, boil them together, and then um, add two tins of corned beef and a tin of baked beans into the water. Might, don't put too much water in. It's like a stew, corned beef stew. Yeah. Lovely. The same here. I, I, I really love corned beef. Me. 
nice. I've just wrote that down, Jeffrey. I'll ask her and Rowley if you can okay, use Joel Cole in wheelchair. He might come back for wheeling it. Yeah. Well, I know he does, but there's a process in there. Oh, Mick, I've got some photos. I'll send them to you. I've just got to add a few more. Austin. Anybody else got a couple for next week? Jeff, me up, help with that. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple, you. Mick. Good man. Been saving a, saving a few up. I'll send some over to you. Bro. Is that it then, people? Yeah. Yeah, I think cool. so. Nice one. Just, just one thing on, you remember I, I mentioned I had, um, I found some Humax last week. Yes. Um, here's Roland now, is it? That's just come back. Is that the chap you wanted? Yeah, that's Roland. Um, Roland. Uh, Jeffrey's got a question for you. Go on then. Sorry, it's all right. Shoot off for a minute, yeah? Uh, uh, just a question, like, I can't get biochar here. Can I use charcoal in any way? Well, I did see somebody on uh, Facebook the other day, that it, I think it was in America anyway, and he'd bought some lump, char, uh, lump charcoal, like barbecue in charcoal, that um, said on it, it, it hadn't been used with any oil substances and everything. Um, and he was using it quite successfully. So, um, Really, I would say, yeah, if you use lump charcoal, yeah. uh, and some of the bags I do say, or I do understand, say, hardwood charcoal, because it's supposedly hardwood that makes the best biochar or charcoal like. Yeah. Um, I, I would just hunt them, like you say, when you look in the bags of the compost, you see the crap some people put in there. Yeah, I think you've got to do the same with bags of charcoal. Have a look and make sure you're buying a clean charcoal and go with that. Okay, thank you. you. Know, and um, like, like I say, but you, you, you must charge it with whatever, even if you just smash it up in a bucket and pee on it. You must charge it with something before you use it. Otherwise, it takes three or four years to get, say, the goodness out of your soil into the charcoal before it starts doing any good so oh, yeah. you know I, I, I mix the same as the stuff I gave to, to Mick I always um, use the compost out of my wormery in it um, and whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong I bought uh, because the um, what can I say the bugs and different things in there um, they like something sweet so what I do is I, I've got um, a bag of sheep food um, called sugar beet, right? It, it's from the from the mill where they've taken the sugar beet out of it, and it's a, it, it's just the feed they give to the sheep and cows and what have you. Um, but it, it's like in pellets, they put it in a bucket, put some water in it, leave it for a couple of days, stir it up, and then mix that with it. And my logic tells me I put sugars in there to feed the bacteria and stuff. Then. Mm. Now, whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, it's all a matter of playing anyway. Yeah. Um, but that's the stuff that I gave Mick, and he seems happy using it. So, yeah. um, like I say, any nitrogen, whether you could dissolve chicken pellet in there, or you, if you've got fresh chicken muck, put a handful of that in it and stir it up. I think anything to put some goodness into the charcoal before you use it to create the biochar. Okay. okay, I'll try that. Okay. I can get everything. So, so. Yeah. Another trial for you, Jeffrey? Yeah. Cheers okay. for that, Rowley. No, sweat, no problems at all. That's not the same as doing compost tea when you put your molasses in. That's yeah, just it was to kickstart the bacteria going there. That was oh. the logic behind it. That's it, yeah. Mm. Natural aid, work with nature. Yeah, well, I, well you get about a 25 litre, uh, 25 kilo bag of um sugar beet nuts for seven or eight quid and it just you know you only got to throw a couple of handfuls in when they when they feed it to horses it has to um have the same volume of water as sugar beet nuts otherwise yeah. it, it it expands and it sort of blow their stomachs out so if you feed it to animals you should wet it first 
and so I just wet it all and throw it in and mix it up. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, but all, all, all of mine, whatever I do, whether I've mixed the compost or whatever, or made me biochar, everything that I do before it's finally used goes to an ordinary garden shredder, you know, so that it's well and truly mixed. As well as yeah. I've got a mixing machine as well, but I always put it finally through a garden shredder before I use it. Okay, thank you, Rolly. No worries. Nick, Nick yes. what did you just say about adding molasses to compost tea? What's that all about? If you make compost tea, yeah. I'll leave it. I'll put one together and I'll bung it on next week. So everybody near it. Yeah, because I, I thought compost tea was just a just a liquid out of compost or something. I didn't realise you had to add stuff to it. No. Oh, wow. This is what the farmers are doing in the States. They use compost oh. tea now instead of fertilisers. Does that go for worm tea as well? No. Yeah. Everyone, you, everyone you talk to has got their own recipe. It's yeah. all top secret. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would put a, a, a molasses or, or something similar as I use the sugar beet extract um, yeah. to feed the bacteria and whatever. You're not going to do no harm with it, I don't think. No. It, it what it won't do, because I already tried this, I um, put some in the bucket of water and stirred it all up and got it as a compost and set seeds in it and nothing grew. <laughs> you know, using it 100%, nothing grew in it. It'll be too strong. <laughs> you got to try it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call an error. Yeah. I use the molasses uh, you can get for, for cooking because yes, it has to that's be... That's the same uh, one. Blackstrap molasses. Yeah, Black treacle, we call it, don't we? Yeah. One thing not in there, um, what's it called? Non it's got to be on Salford though. Yeah. On Salford. Yeah. Well, I thought the one for cooking is should, should be on Salford, so. Mm, same one. Use that one. Uh, I've and got then mine. I I've got mine from uh, Holland and Barrett, so I'll probably pay three times as much as I need. To. I've just got black cheekle from Tesco. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah, go and get one for a penny at all. <laughs> just want to go in Holland and Barrett. <laughs> I, I got mine uh, from the English store here and it's next to the golden syrup in tin, so yeah. uh, I, I, yeah. I got that one. And then I aerate with a water pump, well, with a oxygen pump. Yeah, that's it. So it can bubble Breathe. Up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there was me thinking black treacle was just for cakes. <laughs> it's the goodies for the bacteria. But don't try what I tried. I did it once with the yeast, dried yeast, and it kind of just went all over the greenhouse. <laughs> had a frothy greenhouse for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was something else, but <laughs> some trials work, some don't. <laughs> it was good. It was in in the height of summer, about five six years ago. I saw on the YouTube uh, a French bloke make compost tea. He added everything in, and then he stirred the barrels. And then in later video he posted, you can get these like an aerator with two hoses on um, oh. Oh, what's it called? So with a solar panel. Yeah. So it yeah. keeps going. So yeah. I just uh, yeah. uh, I'll leave it. It's warm enough. A few days should, should be okay. So I didn't go down to, down to the plot for for three or four days I think so just left it and when I opened the door it was kind of like a foam party about that much foam <laughs> <laughs> everywhere <laughs> you ordered that again no but everything grew really good that year so maybe I should I don't know <laughs> best feed you can get compost tea obviously you got to make compost but Start off with good yeah. compost. Yeah. If you've got worms, you've got good compost. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what I meant to ask you, Nick. What worms did you get for your um, uh, wormery? I went down the fishing tackle shop, just got four quids worth of them. 
Are they tiger worms or what? What ones uh, are they? Gendry bean, isn't it? Gendry, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. think it's from England, eh? They're called brandlings. What's brandling? I think they're the the compost worms. Thing. Them like the tiger worms. Right. I've got to get brandling. some more from my wormery, I think. You can send for brandling worms in the post. Mm. It cost a bloody bomb. Yeah. Money for yeah. quid in the fishing tackle shop. Yeah, I'll find a fishing yeah. shop. Just They're the best one. Get a bag of horseshite on the side of the road where people put it out and they'll have pretty plenty in there for you. Oh, this woman wanted to charge me a pound the other day and then she said, for a bag of like horse manure, and then she said, oh, you've got to bag it yourself. And I thought, I ain't paying a pound to bag it myself. <laughs> <laughs> But you probably get going to bag it for me, but I'm no, I'm not paying a pound. You'll probably get a lot of worms in there. Yeah, I'm sure you would, but because I've not got the allotment anymore, it's in my garden. I've not got access to it anymore. But mm. I'm not paying a pound. It's your <laughs> rubbish. You got a free bag. Twenty-five p a bag, Randy. No, oh, there's there's one one horse stables um uh, stables up the road that's doing it for free. They just said come bag it. So I don't mind bagging oh, it yeah. myself. If it's free. Not for free, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they usually give it away, don't they? Get rid of it. Yeah. They need to get rid of it. Yeah, but charging a pound, she said, oh, it's a pound a bag. And I'm like, I only want one bag. I've only got a little garden. <laughs> <laughs> You're my bloody cheapskate, you am, Susan. <laughs> Are they the oh, same? I, I'm going on. I've got to buy some yeah. environment. I need the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you all next week. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.